I had this idea that if we come to the fish market, if we could find somebody to, to if we could buy some fish or something interesting and have somebody cook it for us, this would be the ultimate fish market experience in Sichon. Good morning everyone, it's Mark Weens. I am in Sichon in southern Thailand, Nakhon Si Tamarat. <laughs> this morning we are at a very local fish market which is right next to the ocean and we're here to just walk around and see what we can find. I'm loving it. We got here at about 7, it's about 7.30 a.m. and have we were... Oh, I have a boat coming right now. <laughs> okay, but we got here at about 7 a.m. and we, we, I was almost disappointed because all the trays are empty. We thought they were cleaning up already. But the, they have just told us, an auntie has just told us that the fish haven't arrived yet. So they'll be coming in about 30 minutes, hopefully. So we're here at perfect time. Well, this has to be one of the most picturesque markets I've ever been to in my life. It is right next to the ocean. Just a friendly atmosphere. Just all local fishermen, the coconuts. How it works is that the boats come up in the morning and sometimes the family members will then sell the, the fish from the fishermen and other times some of the, the ladies at the market they will come here and buy some of the fish and then resell them at the market. And this is the first boat in this morning. They have a, a little selection of different fish and some crabs in there. I'll have some patangoy. One. Yeah. As we're waiting for the main bulk of the fish to arrive, we're going to have some snacks for breakfast today. One of the classic Thai Chinese street snacks to eat in the morning is patong gal, which are the fried uh, donuts, savory donuts. Grab a little bite like this. Yeah, hot and fresh. You got to eat them hot and fresh. If they're like cold and stale, they're not very good. One of my favorite sweet Thai dessert snacks is called kanam krok, and they are making an amazing version over here, a, a really old style. So I think you got a cup, cup in my cup. This is by far the coolest karam krok that I've ever seen in Thailand. Her technique is amazing, and this is an ancient, old, old style of making karam krok. Like you got that really, uh, the piece of the iron griddle, and then she's adding in the the different mixtures, and even her her spoon with the bamboo. It's a it's a piece of bamboo made into a a little spoon where she she dips in and then adds that coconut milk to the to the little cakes it's awesome absolutely awesome and they're so friendly i've just been asking them about their kanam krok they don't add sugar but it's just coconut milk there's two layers the first uh, liquid batter is coconut milk and a little bit of rice flour and that's what holds it together and then the top layer of the liquid is just pure coconut milk. Sometimes you'll see on the streets of Thailand you'll see that they use a lot of oil to to oil the griddle before they put in the batter to so it doesn't stick. They say they don't use any oil because they don't need oil because of the coconut milk. It's just all the coconut milk. It's so much coconut milk that they don't need they don't even need oil. And they make them in the little cup shapes and then they put them together as two so a, a little twin. And normally you can, let me find one that's really hot. Oh yeah, this one feels like it's right off the, the fire. Look at that. If you can get a really close up look at that, you can just see how that's just like, like thickened, reduced coconut milk. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, I think that's the best condom croak I've ever had. There's no sugar in it. They give you a little packet of sugar to eat on the side. You can either pour it on or you can just eat it with no sugar and just rely on that, that coconut milk for the sweetness. The coconut milk itself has a little bit of a sweetness. It's also a little bit salty. They've added some salt to the recipe to, to contrast and that just kind of increases the flavor of the coconut. It, it, it amplifies the flavor of the coconut. That's like coconut pudding within a crunchy, smoky shell. Outrageously good. Here comes another boat in from the sea and this is uh, like a chain pulley device. And there's actually a motor there to, to pull the boat in from the ocean onto the bank. That looks like it's been used a few times. More and more of the fishing boats are arriving, but 
I got, we got hung up on eating all those snacks because they're so friendly and so nice and just invited us to sit down and eat. Today, for unpredictable reasons, was honestly not the best catch. Most of the local fishermen only caught small fish, handfuls of mackerel, and a few crabs mixed within. But part of the beauty of visiting this local fish market in Thailand is that it isn't at all commercialized. The fishermen are all from this village, and their catch isn't transported to a bigger city or sold at a bigger market. But everything that's caught is sold and consumed right within this fishing community. <laughs> We are trying to sort of talk to some of the, the aunties here and see if anyone will, will cook for us. Hello, Mark. What is your name? Mark. Mark. Yes. Oh. What is your name? Daho. <laughs> nice to meet you. Where are you? I just ended up on the back of a motorbike and we are going over to Auntie's house to cook some eel. Balai pan pet, chama gap. Let me just quickly tell you what happened. I don't even know if I can explain the, the whole story, but we're at the market and we actually started talking with this with Auntie who uh, was selling eels. We were, I was just asking them her how, how she cooked it and she said she makes uh, pad pet, which is a stir fry with chili paste and lots of chilies. And then we just kind of asked her, or Ying Ying talked to her and all of a sudden I was on the back of a motorcycle on the way back to her place and she's making a dish called Balai Pad Pet, which is eel stir fried with all the chili paste in it. I can't wait to try it. Cutting up the eel is a real art, but she is doing it so expertly. You have to cut out that big thick bone and then she's navigating her way around it and slicing the meat and then cutting it into pretty small pieces. But you can tell that she has done this many, many times. At this house, they're also making guppy, which is shrimp paste. So uh, it's fresh shrimp paste that they're, well, it's not fresh because it, it has to, to leave and sort of ferment to, to make it shrimp paste. But they're making it right at home. So this is homemade shrimp paste and she's gonna include some of it in the, the recipe that she's making with the, the eel. Any cream gang? Cup cup pee, my cup. Okay, cup. Chop cream, cup. My wine, cup. To make the spicy eel, she first sauteed a bunch of garlic in some hot oil and then added in a heap of curry paste, which she had already mixed with shrimp paste, and let that sizzle in the oil to release a massive amount of flavor. She then tossed in the chopped up pieces of eel and stir fried it until all of the eel was coated in luscious curry sauce. Finally, a good handful of fresh chilies, some young green peppercorns, and plenty of fresh holy basil, all of which were picked from right outside the house, finished it off. The eel is finished and it's stir fried. They added in more chilies and some green pepper. And this is a piece, a little piece of the eel, the meat. Wow. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. Eel is just so buttery and melt in your mouth. And then that's just coated in so much curry paste and shrimp paste. You can taste the shrimp paste nicely. And that's awesome that they make the shrimp paste right here at home. And that's spicy. Oh, that's good. But she's packing it now into bags and we're gonna head back to the head back to the fish fish market. I got my bags full of blalai, the eel, and 
they're gonna show me some more eels back here. โอ้เห็นมั้ยเนี่ยตัวเป็นๆที่เมื่อตะกี้ยังไม่ได้ทําให้มันตายดูดิฮะน่ากินนะเอาอ่ะกินข้าวจิ้มไหมมั้ยอ
Okay, next up for Kajio, this is an omelet. Oh, she put some onion in, onions in here too, wonderful. And I will add a little bit of that piknapla, which is fish sauce and chilies. It's one of the great flavors of Thailand. It's crispy, it's salty. The fish sauce gives it the, the wonderful Thai, Thai uniqueness of it. And then finally, not forgetting the eel. Aloy mak, kab. Aloy mak, kuk yang, kuk yang, kab. Loko ani, ani pad pet, kab. Let me take out some of this. There's some bones in here too, but you can see all of that. Oh wow, look at how chunky and just full of all those ingredients, those herbs. There's lemongrass in there, there's turmeric, there's there's uh, young pepper in there. Alright, so with the eel, you gotta I'm not sure if there's any bones in this bite or not. Wow. That eel is absolutely spectacular. The eel, the eel itself just sort of melts in your mouth. It's so soft and buttery and fatty. But then that curry paste that it's fried with is just massive flavor. It's you can taste the lemongrass, the turmeric in there. It's spicy. Properly spicy. I love the green peppercorns and also you can taste the the holy basil in there as well. This is the type of community, rural, countryside restaurant that's so friendly that the, the owner, who is the auntie who's cooking, comes over just to not only say hi, but to come over and sit and chat and just hang out while we're eating her here. And then that's the first time we've ever met her. Oh, the love, the community, the friendliness of this place is unbelievable. These little shellfish are addictively good. They're so good, but they're so small. And you just kind of slurp them down. They're delicious. That was an extremely satisfying lunch, but there is one thing on my mind, the only thing on my mind after that lunch, and it's in the back of the car. I've never opened a co coconut in this fashion before, but they have a, an up-pointed spear. This is to, so you don't fall on it, I think, this piece of coconut, but then you, I don't know if I'll be able, I'm gonna try using this for the first time. Actually, I have a, an expert who's gonna help me. Ah, okay, cop. Oh, cop. He cut open that coconut a lot better than I ever could have. Oh, that coconut is just filled with water. There's so much in there. Oh, wonderful. Oh, it's kind of leaking out. We've got a hole in the shell. Okay, cop. Cup in my cup. Oh, yeah. Mmm. The coconut is starting to get on the old side, I think. It's a little bit, has a little bit of a fermented taste, but it's really good. It's sweet and refreshing. Oh, yeah, it almost has like a fizz to it. Just gonna take a walk out onto the beach, but that was a. Uh, a satisfying lunch and just take a look at this beach oh just part of what makes it is just how peaceful how relaxing and how quiet and friendly this place is lunch was good but I also highly highly enjoyed walking around the market this morning Ying and I have met just in a we've only been here in Sichuan for a very short time but we have already met so many so many friendly genuine people this is really an amazing coastal community. I'm gonna end this video right now. Thank you all very much for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. And finally, if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe now. I'm gonna be sharing with you lots more food and travel videos. And thank you again for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye from Sichon, Thailand.